Hi there, and welcome to Spiritual How-Tos. This is a place where you'll get some brief Bible basics on how you can please the Lord. And today's topic is how to prioritize the Bible in your life, how to make the Bible a priority. So let me start by asking you, how long can you live without food, without eating, without filling your stomach? How long do you think you can live? Well, I just recently read that we can live three minutes without air, three hours without shelter, three days without water, and three weeks without food. So I guess we can live three weeks without food. Maybe, and I think the same can be said of our spiritual life, our spiritual food. Maybe we can live three weeks without being fed spiritually. I think it could be true. Um, Remember Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. And then he also said, I, excuse me, no man can live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So we feed spiritually on the word. That would be on Jesus and his words, and his life, that's our bread. The teachings of Jesus would be our bread, would be the food that we live on. But Jesus said that's not all. But we live on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Well, what is that? That means the whole Bible. We live on the whole Bible, from cover to cover, from book to book, excuse me, we live on the whole Bible every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, because it really is in that word where everything begins. Everything begins in the word. Our life begins in the word. Our joy begins in the word. It's the word that brings life to us. The word does. Understanding it, applying it, living it is what brings life to our life, purpose to our life. May I suggest an an analogy here? An analogy, let me put this down. Thank you. Um, Just like we eat bread, okay? When we eat bread, we eat it. And so it goes in our mouth, we eat it. So when we eat spiritually, I'd like to suggest this analogy that we eat it, we eat the bread, the word, we digest the word, and then it becomes part of us, just like bread. We eat it, we digest it, and it becomes part of us, right? So the same thing can be true of the word. We eat it, we digest it, and it becomes a part of us. And it's that daily Bible reading that really is necessary for it to become part of us, for us to live a life that's pleasing to the Lord. We read the Bible, we know the Bible, and it becomes a part of us. Paul said to Timothy, he said, hey, study to show yourself approved of God. How do I show that God approves of me as I study the Word? Well, then how do we do that? How do we study the Word? How do we prioritize the Word of God? How do I make it a part of my life? I want to offer you four steps for your consideration in prioritizing the Word of God in your life. Number one, first step, I believe, begins with making a decision. If we're going to prioritize the Word in our life, we have to make a decision to eat. We have to make a decision that the Bible is important. Um, We have to be intentional about it. You see, you and I do what we think is important. And if we go through each day without eating any word, it's not going to unchange until we decide we need to feed our spirit. It starts with a decision. And if we've already been feeling hungry, maybe we're already dead, maybe we haven't eaten spiritually for a very long time, it's going to be harder to make that decision, I'm going to be honest. But we won't give up, we won't stop. Don't stop trying because we need life, we need sustenance, we need joy, we need purpose. So number one, set a time to read the Word. 
I'll be honest, there I've known the Lord for over 50 years. There have been seasons in my life when the Word was not a priority. Okay, it's just fact. Okay, and then there have been seasons of my life where the Word was a priority. It, you are going to have seasons. There are going to be times like that. But as we're seeking to mature, which is what we talked about last week, then we want to set a time, make it a priority, make a conscience, conscious, intentional decision to spend time eating the Word. So that's number one. Make a decision. Make it a priority. Number two, eat the Word. Eat it. That's the second step. Eat it. That means read it or listen to it. Maybe you're not a reader. Maybe you want to listen to it. Do it. But I want to insert a, a caution here. You, we need to be reading and listening to the actual Bible, not devotionals about the Bible, not reading other books about the Bible. Reading other books about the Bible is not reading the Bible. And it's the Bible it's the Word of God that will feed us. It's not devotionals written by other people. Sorry if I stepped on toes, but it's the truth. So you're going to need a Bible app, or you're going to need a Bible. If you're going to read the Bible or listen to the Bible, you're going to need a Bible, right? A Bible. You're going to need one, okay? And you're going to need to, to use it. So with that thought in mind, I want to give you some things to consider in regards to the Bible, okay? And, and these is just informational things to help you consider, some things you need to keep in mind when selecting a Bible or about the Bible. First of all, please remember that the Bible was originally written, the Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew and Aramaic. Those are the original languages. The New Testament was originally written in Greek. Well, because most of us don't speak Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek, we have to have the Bible translated so we can understand it. Does that make sense? Sure it does. So it makes tons of sense that we need to have the Bible translated. Well, the confusing part is there are over 400 different English translations for the Bible. And that's where some of us go on mind tilt because there are so many translations. I do want to tell you though that most translations, if not all, I would have to say, all translations are translated for accuracy and understandability. They translate the original languages to make it accurate to the true text and to make it understandable to those of us that don't speak it. So please be confident that the translations are both accurate and understandable. With that in mind, let me tell you that there's three different kinds of translations. Okay, The first kind of translation is called a formal translation. Now what that means is that it's translated kind of word for word. So if the original says this, then the translation tries to copy that word for word idea formal, word-for-word -word translations. Now, Bible translations that use the formal translation are the King James, the New King James, the Amplified, the ESV, uh, the NASB, and the RSV. All of those use word-for-word -word translations. Nothing good or bad about either one. It's just a form of translation. The second kind of translation is called a dynamic translation, and that means it's translated thought by thought. In other words, they don't tear apart every single word. They take the whole thought and then they translate the whole thought. That makes sense? Thought for thought. Okay, that's called dynamic. Some of the translations that use dynamic translation are the NIV, the NLT, the CSB, the HCSB, the NRSV, and the NCV. All of those mean certain things. You can look them up. I don't need to go into all of them, but they're certain translations. And they are going to use the dynamic translation, the thought for thought. Then there's a third kind of translation, and it's called a free translation. That means it's a paraphrase. They take the old uh, verse, and they go, hmm, what are they really trying to say? And then they translate it in a paraphrase. Make sense? And we love the paraphrases because they're easy to understand, okay? But some paraphrases are the message, the good news, um, 
Testament, the TPT, which most of us have grown to love, and the Living Bible. Those are paraphrases. Now, all of that to say, I hope I didn't lose you in the weeds there, but all of that to say there are tons of accurate Bible translations for you to choose from. Tons. Don't be afraid. I would suggest, though, if you're just beginning to read the Bible and you want to really make it a priority and you've not really done it, maybe you want to begin with an NIV translation, the New International Version, or maybe even the NLT, the New Living Translation. Those are good translations when you're just getting your feet wet. No problem with that. Just start. Now, this generation, and you may be part of it, is tons into digital books and digital uh, Bibles. It's odd for me to go to church and people take out their phone and pull up their Bible. Okay, it's I'm still, I'm an old school, I go to church with my Bible still. Okay, doesn't matter as long as you have a Bible. So there are dozens, if not hundreds of Bible apps. On the notes, I've listed 12 different Bible apps that you can get. I want to just highlight a couple of them. You can get the Bible, the verse of the day, and that way it'll bring up a Bible verse and give you some uh, meat about that Bible verse. Those are really good. Another one would be the Bible is. That's an audio translation where maybe you don't want to read, you just want to hear the Bible. That's a good app. So the Bible is is a great app. Um, Our Daily Bread is a Bible app that gives you Bible verse and then information and inspirational thoughts about that Bible verse. One I love and use almost every day is called the Blue Ribbon Bible. Oh, excuse me, the Blue Letter Bible. The Blue Letter Bible. It's a good study one. If you've, if you've walked in the, the Word a long time, you might want to have that handy. I use it for reference nearly every day. The Blue Letter Bible. It's for in-depth Bible study. The Bible Gateway is a good one. U version is a good one. Um, but check them out and read the Bible on your phone if you want or listen to it. It's an app or on your iPad. The point is, my friend, we need to be eating the Word, right? Eating the Word. I'll tell you, on my Bible, on my bookshelf in my room, I have 11 different Bibles and then several more just Bible portions. That's great! Yay! No, it's not. It means nothing unless I'm using them. Okay? So the key is whatever is going to get you to use it, to read it, is what you want to do. Okay, so once you have a Bible, where do you start, right? That's the next question. Where should I start? There's a lot of choices, right? Well, if you're a new believer or you're new to reading the Word, I would recommend starting in the Gospel of Mark. Why? Well, because remember, Jesus is the bread of life. So we need to know about Jesus, about His words, His life, His actions. No place better to find that out than in the book of Mark or maybe the book of John. And once you read through those, then go to the other Gospels. There are four different Gospels. If you spend a whole year of your life reading nothing but the Gospels, it is a year well spent because you're learning about Jesus. You're eating Jesus' words, digesting them, letting Jesus' life become part of your life. It's a good, good habit. Well, uh, I would also suggest beyond the Gospels, maybe some in the book of Proverbs the book of Proverbs. I have nearly every day of my life used um, reading whatever date it is, that chapter in Proverbs. So today is, today is the 21st. So I read this morning Proverbs 21. On the 1st I read Proverbs 1. On the 40th, oh there's no 40th, Um, but Proverbs is a good place to read. Um, if you're a growing Christian, you've been mature for a while, then you should be reading the epistles, you know, Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians and James. Um, get into some meat of the word. Um, Psalms is always a good place to read. I will confess I get depressed in Psalms a lot just because the guys are constantly crying out for help and I need you, God, which is good, but it's a little kind of depressing to me in places, so I can only take little pieces of of the Psalms at a time. Um, So I'm just being honest. Genesis is an excellent place. You need to get into Genesis because it actually gives you the basic Bible ancestry, and that needs to be part of your Christian life. You need to understand who was Moses and Abraham and Rahab and Joshua. Who were these guys? Read Genesis. 
And then finally, last recommendation would be the book of Acts. If you're seeking to be one that's really walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, you need to make the book of Acts part of your life because that's where it's all demonstrated. So you need a Bible, you need a time to read, um, and where you choose to read. And then uh, lastly, how much should I read? What, you know, how do I know how much to read? Well, how do you know how much to eat? You start, the little baby belong, begins with a little at a time, right? So you might begin with five minutes a day. You might read just a verse a day. You might grow to 15 minutes a day. You might grow to a chapter a day. But the key is start somewhere that you can manage and grow. Just like an infant grows from that sloppy jarred food into eating like I like a big steak and potatoes and broccoli dinner, right? And that's the way you're going to grow spiritually too. You're going to start off easy, go into some deep meat as you grow and become more experienced. But remember, you're eating the Word. So take time to digest it. Don't be rushing through it to hurry up to get dressed and go to work, okay? You're eating. You're eating the Word. Um, so let's review, okay, where are we at? We got to start by prioritizing the Bible. That's what we're trying to do, get the Bible part of our life. So how do we do that? We make a decision, we eat it, and then we eat the bread. We find a place to eat it. Well, then the third step is to digest it. Once I eat it, I need to understand it. I need to meditate on it. I need to know it, maybe memorize it, mull it over, question, reflect, compare, ask questions. See, because those things help my understanding and it empowers me to actually live a life that's pleasing to the Lord, right? But I have to understand what I'm reading. Let me give some Bible verses to you and then we'll be wrapping this up. The Bible says that thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. So as we hide the word in our heart, it keeps us from sinning. It's an alert. It's a conscious voice. It's a, it's a red light that flashes as we hide the word in our heart. The word also says is a lamp to our feet. It's going to guide our path. As we're in the word, that word will guide us through the day. We already referenced 2 Timothy about studying to show ourself approved. Study is not just eating. Study is reading the context, reading the other verses that relate. Study is digging into that one verse that you read this morning, now spending some time on it to really dig deeper. That's study. That's how we show ourselves approved. All scripture, 2 Timothy 3 tells us, is profitable. So Old Testament and New Testament. Don't just become a New Testament cre cre Christian and don't just become an Old Testament cre Christian. Oy vey. Both are needed. All scripture is profitable. The whole word is living and acting and sharper than any two-edged sword. So as you read the word, it is living. It goes inside you just like that bread and it does a work to bring nutrition and insight to you and to give you strength for each and every day. Romans tells us that faith comes by hearing. So if you're struggling with your faith, I can guarantee you you're not hearing the word and you're not in the word, period. My hunch is, instead of hearing the word, you're in the world. Faith comes by hearing the word, not by hearing the world's news. Okay. So, there are lots of other verses. I've got them on the notes. I won't go into them. But digesting the word, letting it do its work in us, is the third step. And then the fourth step to how to make the word a priority in our life is to live it. I'll tell you, reading the Word has its challenges. It does. But living it is its greatest challenge, is my greatest challenge. You see, James tells us, be doers of the Word, not just hearers. It's easy to read it. It's harder to live it. Jesus said in John, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. So as I read the Word and it lights my path, it shows me, Debbie, that's something that needs to be dealt with. And I go, you're right, God. I need to deal with that. Help me to deal with that. And it's the Word in my life that shows me what's pleasing to the Lord. Because it's the Word 
that's truth. It's the word. So that's how we live it. We live it. We act it out. Then it becomes part of our understanding. It becomes the standard for our life. It becomes the priority in our life. The word becomes actually the lens through which I see the world then as we grow in it and as we feed ourselves spiritually we are changed because we're digesting jesus and we're living jesus so my friend i encourage you to make a decision today to get in the word i encourage you to read it read the bible listen to it digest it and live it because that is how Please the Lord and show ourselves approved unto God. Thanks for your time, your attention, this session. I hope to see you next week. And again, you can see the notes on underdebraspalm.com. Take care.